indirect compensation, what's that? Well, if I'm receiving payments from another vendor, not directly from you, but from another vendor that I put in your plan, you need to report that. If I'm getting bonuses, persistency bonuses, because I have a block of business, I steer all my business to a certain provider, that needs to be reported. Uh, also, if you like get a trip because you you did such a good job that someone gives you an all expense paid trip, this is you know happens frequently in the broker world. That is compensation that needs to be reported. Tickets to the game on Sunday and the good box that is compensation because you know you would have paid hundreds if not thousands of dollars for it. If you can, you taught me this. Julie <laughs> teaches me a lot. Um, if you can sell it, it's compensation. Good rule of thumb. Mm -hmm. So. Why, why do people not want to comply with this law? Or do they say, oh, well, you know, I report things on the 5500. There's a lot of money that gets made in places that it probably shouldn't be. And unfortunately, we live in a world of misaligned incentives where a lot of people get paid uh, in ways that aren't, um, aren't tied to driving down cost, right, or improving value. So on a commission-based advisory relationship, if you get a 30% increase at renewal, kind of get a 30% bonus, right? You could fire me, but this is some of the issues that the DOL, that the government's really trying to adv address and zero, zero down on. Unfortunately, the impetus falls on you, once again, as the employer. If you aren't collecting these or you haven't proactively received them, um, the liability falls on you as a fiduciary. This is the point in the conversation where you can actually use the four-letter word. <laughs> the other F word. And scream, yeah. <laughs> and scream it.